Now, the experiment, <laughs> you guys know if you've been with me a little while, I am not a baker. For as much cooking as I do, I don't bake. Well, I, I don't even know why I came across it. I think, oh, you know what? I think it came across my Facebook feed. And that there was this recipe for English muffin bread. Now, the great thing about English muffins is all those sort of nooks and crannies in there and it gets all kind of crispy, crunchy, and it's just, it's a really pleasant texture for me. And you know, sometimes I struggle with texture. So I saw this recipe and I thought, okay, it can only be so hard, right? <laughs> so I have watched her video multiple times. I've read the recipe over and over and over, and I'm going to try this. I read through all the comments on there and people were saying, like, I had the question, so, so you can laugh, but you know, like I said, not a baker. Um, I was like, do you have to sift the flour? And then me and Google had a big look up on that. And apparently the answer is no. Um, and somebody said, can you use, do you have to use active dry yeast and activate it? Or can you use instant yeast? And she said, the results are the same, whether you utilize instant yeast or, uh, dry active yeast. So I am going to use, I have some Red Star instant yeast. And then she said, you can use self-rising flour or you can use all-purpose flour and then add in the um, baking soda and salt. But I have self-rising that I use for my two-ingredient dough. So I've got that. And then she talked about the milk needing to be warm. So it needs to be 110 degrees. I'm not sure how long that takes, but I do have a, a food thermometer. So I'm going to warm this up a little bit at a time until it gets to that. And then there is some cornmeal to, you basically butter and cornmeal the baking dish. And then you put a bit of cornmeal on the top. So I've got that. And then there's just a little sugar. So it's basically self-rising flour, yeast, sugar, milk, and cornmeal. And that's it. And we'll see. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. You don't need it. It's not a stiff dough. She calls it a, a gloopy dough. And like in the video, she shows you the texture. So the most common comment that people had was that it fell in the middle. And she was saying that that can happen if you aren't using the right amount of flour for the temperature conditions that you're cooking in or if you let it rise too long <laughs> and I'm like oh yeah this is why I don't bake <laughs> all right so so let's see I'm gonna throw these sweet potatoes in the instant pot because that's cruisy don't have to do anything I'm gonna try this bread and then once that is rising because that has a 30 minute rise. Once that's rising, I'm going to go ahead, I'm doing a fruit and yogurt bowl for breakfast, and I'm going to go ahead and get that started. All right, so here's the point where all you bakers out there get to laugh at me, okay? All right, so a couple of things. Alexa and I had a conversation about heating milk in the microwave, and how long did you leave it in there for to get it to 110 degrees? And the response was, you heat it for one minute and 10 seconds. That's not true. <laughs> or it might be true for a different amount. This is half of the recipe that I've linked to. So this is one cup and two tablespoons of milk. And it was, um, it was 140 degrees when I took it out, which was just a second ago. So let's see where we're at. I figure by the time I get some of this other stuff done, it'll, it'll cool down a bit. Okay, so we're still registering at like in the 130s. Okay, so her, her video, she says put half of your flour. In my case, I'm only doing a two cup loaf. Um, the recipe is for a four cup or two loaves. So I've everything that I have done is half of what she had. So she said put half of your flour in the bowl 
with your yeast and sugar or if you're doing the dry yeast she shows you how to do that and then she's like okay so you mix that up so that part's fine and what I was reading was that this is why you don't have to sift your flour anymore because a flour is milled finer now um, and when you stir it with a whisk it aerates it <clears throat> and breaks up any little clumps so you guys feel free to correct me but that's what Google said all right the other thing she said was have your baking dish um, grease it with butter and she said if you're not sure that you hit all the spots or you want to be extra extra sure that you actually you know it comes out fairly easy you can hit it with some cooking spray so I did because I'm trying to set myself up to be successful in the whole non baker light and then you put a little bit of cornmeal so I've just used uh, Arrowhead Arrowhead arrow I've used yellow cornmeal so that's in there okay then when my milk gets to the right temperature because if you use milk that's too warm it kills the yeast and if you use war, uh, milk that's too cool it doesn't activate properly it doesn't rise properly so let's see where we're at now okay All right, we're still at about 123. So instead of making you wait, I'm going to push pause and um, I'll come back to you when the milk is at the right temperature. All right, we are back. We are at 110.1. So she added all the milk. And then <clears throat> whisk that up. And it basically made almost like a Okay. So that's where we're at there. And then, this is the part where you're supposed to get it to the gloopy state. And she said you basically add your flour in, the remaining flour, in parts. And depending on what temperature it is <clears throat> and what elevation you're at and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, she can't say exactly how much to put in there. Ooh, that might be too thick. I don't think I'm going to put any more in there. So. Obviously, you shouldn't do this with a whisk. Let me change this over. As y'all giggle at the fact that. <laughs> that I'm not doing this properly. Okay. So first, let's reclaim my dough here. That would be why she mixed with a wooden spoon. Mm -hmm. Did I do that? No. I have to say, this is thicker with less flour than her recipe looked like so I've either done it wrong already or I divided the measurements wrong I don't know I'm afraid to put more milk in there okay so let me try this with a spatula I, I guess, I mean, she was like, if you lift it on the spoon, this is too thick. It should come off the spoon. Okay. All right. I'm going to <clears throat> get 
I'm gonna put a little bit of water in there. My instant pot, the sweet potatoes are done, so it's gonna release steam in in a second. So that's what that noise you're gonna hear is. Okay, that looks a little closer to what hers was. It still doesn't come off the spatula. I'm going to put just a little bit more water in there. She said it should be like the super wet, sticky consistency. Okay, this looks closer. to what she had. All right, let me try that. Oh, it still didn't come off. This is so why it's experiments in eating. <laughs> because Okay, all right. So, th I'm gonna try this, okay? And basically she said that you just pour it in. That's a lot of flour not used. Oh, guys, I have no idea what this is gonna do or if this is gonna do anything. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, um, she said that it shouldn't fill, like, you know, you don't want it to be too high because it still has to rise. So, you basically spread it out in your little pan. And <clears throat> she said, scrape the bowl really well. So, we've done that. All right. Now. This, my house is kind of cold at the moment, so in a, a house where it was a little warmer, you would only let this rise for 30 minutes. Um, she said if the, if the house is colder, then you can let it go for 40. So, I am going to set this back here on the stove. I'm going to set a timer for 40 minutes, because apparently if it overrises, then that's why it falls in the middle. And we'll see what it looks like at the rise point. I don't know. I think I've mucked it up. But let's see what we come up with. Okay, so we have some rise. And it's a little jiggly. Um, but the recipe says 425 preheated. So I've done that. And 15 minutes if you like a light crust, 20 to 25 minutes if you like a darker crust. So I am going to set my timer for, let's do 20 minutes. Let's split the difference there. All right, we'll get that in the oven and we'll see. So that's what it looks like right now. So this is how much flour was left in the bowl. That's like three quarters of a cup. I don't know how that, if this, how or if this bread is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna adjust the recipe because obviously I didn't use that and we'll see what happens. Guys, I might not have failed. 
<laughs> that does not look half bad. Okay, so, so that's what it looks like. It's got a nice little crust on there. Oh, it's supposed to sound crispy, which it does. All right, so now I'm going to let the heat from the oven warm up my house. And I'm going to take this out to cool. She said, depending on, you know, what your house is like, it could take 40 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half. My house is pretty cold, so I'm guessing it'll cool relatively quickly. Um, yeah. It, maybe it wasn't a failure. I don't know. Let's, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Okay, it's all cooled. So, oh, I'm actually, you wouldn't think I'd be nervous because, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? But I, there was so much flour left. I don't know. All right, so here's what we have. It's squishy. That's what it looks like. Our bottom looks good too. Um, it is soft and pliable. All right, let's see what we get. I am gonna cut this, because it's not very tall, I'm gonna cut this into say eight servings. So this will be our halfway point. All right, it's the moment of truth. Oh, check that out. Lots of little nooks and crannies. Wow, other than the fact that it's not particularly tall, that's pretty darn awesome. So I'm going to cut that up and then I'm gonna have two slices of this. I'm gonna put it in the air fryer and toast it. She said it's even better when you toast it. So I'm gonna toast it, and then I'm gonna have that with some Chef Chamois garlic butter, some Good Culture uh, cottage cheese, fresh tomato, and this is just some of the homemade everything bagel seasoning that I made. So I'm gonna have a couple of pieces of tomato toast and yeah, I, uh, I'll i let you know what it's like. Hey guys, so I'm back from Sandy's and I have this salad that I made the other day that I just wrapped and put in the fridge. And then this is my portion of the black rice and butter chicken. But... I gotta tell you, this bread, <laughs> this bread is so good. I'm gonna have another two pieces. I had two pieces for lunch. Um, but I just, oh my gosh, y'all, this is just fantastic. Now, I put this in the air fryer. You have to hear this crunch, okay? Look at that, it's gorgeous. All right, you ready? All right, I'm gonna eat my delicious bread and butter chicken and I will talk to you guys in a little bit.